Cotton, my engines are overheating. I gotta just love that intro to to Star Trek with Captain Kirk and the group. But anyways, I guess we better uh we better do a video here. So I guess we shall start. And we're going. We're gonna talk about. First of all, we should probably talk about what the difference between astronomy and cosmology is. So let's do that. And I guess I better get my pen first. And I guess I'll choose that color. Astronomy. When you talk about astronomy, it's the, uh, really, when you talk about that, astronomy. It's the oldest of the sciences, and it's a, really the study of celestial objects. Study of celestial objects. When you talk about celestial objects, you're talking about the planets, the stars, galaxies, all the stuff that's out there out there in space. So that's astronomy. When you talk about cosmology, cosmology, that's a study of nature. Yeah, let's see if I can get that a little bit smaller. The study of nature. in the universe as a whole. Because this comes up a lot, you know, what's the difference between the two? And, uh, you know, I use them interchangeably all the time, but there is a little bit of a difference. Cosmology is kind of thinking of uh, the whole, uh, you know, how it fits into our existence. And astronomy is the study of the, of the objects out there. So that's really a difference between the two. All right, what we want to talk about today is, if I can get the layer to switch for me, we want to talk about the Big Bang Theory. And again, it is a theory, and uh, we're not going to get into all the mathematical parts of this, so uh, don't fret over that but we'll uh pretty much just what it is and then uh some evidence for it well what the big bang theory is saying if you were to take the the universe and the universe is expanding we'll talk about the uh, the doppler effect a little bit later well if it's expanding then if you think about it you can bring everything back in time and so if you do that what you end up having but the Big Bang Theory is everything started from a small, and again, you're talking infinitesimal here, from a small point. From a small point. And or sometimes you hear the term singularity. And I guess for the lack of a better term, if we got this small point here, there was an explosion and again you got to think of this explosion as three-dimensional and all this matter started to expand or go out into the universe as this matter went out into the universe you know it keeps expanding keeps expanding out keeps expanding out well if we remember from temperature, temperature is, you know, as these particles smack into one another, you know, it's really the kinetic energy. As these particles spread out, the temperature decreased. Temperature decreased. And as this temperature decreased, all these nuclear particles, all the nuclear particles, 
nuclear particles. could form atoms, and these atoms are mostly of hydrogen and helium, the simplest. Well, as these hydrogen and helium atoms, as the, the universe expanded, these hydrogen and helium atoms would start to combine or cluster because of gravity. And we talked about gravity earlier. If it has mass, it has gravitational pull. So gravity clustered the elements, or these atoms, into stars, uh, galaxies, and clusters of galaxies. And uh, we're going to get into the uh, how the solar system was formed. But in a nutshell, this is what the Big Bang Theory is saying. As the, the universe expanded, it cooled. And this, as it cooled, the nuclear particles could form atoms. And we should put down the term atoms in here. And then gravity just started started to cluster these atoms into stars and galaxies. And as I mentioned, we'll get into the uh, formation of the solar system a little bit later. Well, maybe the best analogy of this is when you start talking, if you think of a balloon, and we take a balloon here, and if you put some points on it, you know, the points are fairly large together. But if you put some air into this balloon, the balloon gets bigger and the points get farther apart. And that's probably the best analogy for this whole idea of an expanding universe. And we're going to get into this a little bit more when we talk about the, uh, the, the redshift with the Doppler effect. So if you think of that, you can try it. Just grab a balloon, put some points on it. Uh, don't have it blown up and then start blowing it up and you'll see everything's expanding away from one another. Well, there is some evidence for the Big Bang Theory. And we're just going to go over this real quick. And uh, the evidence is what is called cosmic cosmic background or cosmic microwave, I should say. Microwave background background radiation. Radiation. This was discovered by by accident uh, by some Bell Laboratory scientists who were trying to do some stuff uh, with the radio waves and they kept getting interference and this interference was coming from all parts of the, of the uh, of the sky well what they end up finding that these low intensity radio waves and again they're low intensity came from all directions Oops, directions. And what they eventually discovered, this was this was really leftover energy. Leftover energy. Or radio waves, if you want to think of it like that. Leftover energy from the Big Bang. And this energy was the same, and no matter what direction they looked. So as the, as the universe expanded, there was this energy that was left over. And uh, as it got plotted, and there's been uh, different satellites out there that have gone out there and plotted this, and they found that 
the same amount of energy is in all areas of the universe and it's just left over from the Big Bang. Uh, some people have uh, asked, you know, what's the age of the universe? Well, from this and some from other mathematical studies uh, dealing with, with a Hubble constant, and this is uh, Edwin Hubble, an astronomer, and I'll probably famous for the, uh, the Hubble Space Telescope. From the Hubble constant, the age is anywhere from 20 billion on the old, I guess on the older side to 13 billion years on the younger side. And this Hubble constant are called the Hubble law. They can determine the age from that. We're not going to get into all the math here. There's plenty of other stuff uh, on the uh, on the Big Bang Theory. If you want to check the uh, the uh, resources out, there's a con video dealing with this. Well, this is pretty much the the basic of what we have here. So. Hopefully this helps, and uh, we'll catch you on when we do the next one.